Hey, hey artists, welcome to another video. Today I am going to be painting this portrait of an Aussie with oils. And there's something I wanted to chat with you about today. And basically that is how to improve your art faster. Now, we all want to improve our artwork. That kind of goes without saying. And you definitely will over time. The more you paint, the more you're going to learn. But sometimes we want to kind of get ourselves on a fast track for improving our artwork. Basically, just doing it faster so we can get the results that we want faster. Now, this, of course, is going to be a moving target, and that, you know, is the reality of being an artist and a human in general. But I wanted to share a couple of ways that you can basically improve your art faster. So the first thing that you can do is to be prolific when it comes to creating artwork. Basically, you got to create a lot of it. Now, there is definitely a learning curve when it comes to creating art, and sometimes you just have to grind and create a lot of art in order to improve. Sometimes that's just the harsh reality of it. And another reason why I think you should push, especially if you like want to be on a fast track to improve your artwork, why you should aim to be quite prolific and create a lot of art is basically so that you can move through the art phases of creating a, you know, a piece of artwork more frequently. So this is why when someone wants to improve their art faster, and this is things that, you know, I have done in my own art career, is I like to work on a lot of smaller pieces in the beginning. Now, the reason why I find working on smaller pieces more helpful is because you can actually move through a whole painting from beginning to end much more quickly than you would if you were, say, only painting really large pieces of artwork that tend to take longer. You might be able to actually spend the same amount of time. So let's say you want to create 10 smaller pieces of artwork versus one larger piece of artwork. And let's say, you know, your large piece of artwork might take you a hundred hours total, whereas those 10 smaller pieces might collectively take you the same amount of time. Now, it might seem like the same amount of time being, you know, painting and you're going to improve the same amount. But the thing is, is that each phase of the art process does come with its own learning curves. There's the preparation phase. There's the actual like inspiration, brainstorming, creating your sketch, creating your concept, prepping your canvas, you know, all of that stage. And then there's the actual painting process where you are, you know, creating an underpainting, working through the details and textures, adding color, all that good stuff. All of those phases are something that we need to become more practiced at. So if you are only really painting one massive long painting every once in a while, it's going to kind of harbor how fast you can improve your artwork because you do need to be able to actually move through all of those different phases. So that's why I like to, you know, suggest that you make an effort to become <clears throat> more prolific, create a lot more artwork, but working small when you were in this learning phase, because it's just going to help you to be able to successfully move through all of those different phases of creating a piece of artwork more skillfully. You're going to learn so much and ultimately you're going to improve your art a lot faster. Now, the next thing that you can do to improve your artwork faster is to purposely study artwork. Now, this doesn't mean that you have to go and spend, you know, tens of thousands of dollars on an art school. No, you don't. I'm self-taught. You know, I strongly believe that you can be a successful, thriving artist while being self-taught. And there are endless sources of ways that you can improve your art through instruction. In fact, if you're watching this video, then you're already on one of the best platforms for this. YouTube. You can learn so much amazing stuff on YouTube and, you know, start, yeah, with this platform. Figure out what you actually want to learn and, you know, consume some instructional videos. And then, this is really, really important, actually practice. It 
only gets you so far if you learn about it, but you actually have to practice and, you know, put in the work in order to improve your artwork. So you can, you know, start learning more of the basics of the medium you're using. Maybe you're starting a new medium and you want to give yourself the best chance of success. So you can look up some tutorials, get some lessons on how to use that medium. Or maybe you've been working with a certain medium for a long time and you kind of feel you're at a little bit of a plateau as far as your skill goes. So maybe you actually go back to the building blocks of that medium and learn again how to use them and focus on those foundations. That could be super, super helpful. Or maybe you want to learn a specific skill. Maybe you want to learn how to paint one specific animal or you want to learn how to create really beautiful, captivating pet portraits, but yet you don't really care too much about landscapes. So figure out what you want to learn and actually actively studying that and practicing is going to be a total fast track for improving your art fast. So this next tip kind of follows along what we were just talking about, but basically it's to get clear on how you want to improve. Intention is everything and setting that intention and your expectations before you get started is going to help you to get really laser focused on what you want to do, but it's also going to help you to manage your expectations and that is just going to be a recipe for success. So do you want to learn how to paint faster? Do you want to get better at realism? Maybe you want to create more dynamic paintings. Maybe, like I mentioned before, you specifically want to learn how to improve pet portraits. So rather than trying to progress in a ton of different areas, so instead of, you know, trying to get faster and more realistic and more dynamic and do all this stuff at once, pick one area to get focused in first and then spend a lot of time and energy mastering that skill, that technique, that subject, whatever you want. Focus on that first and then once you become more masterful at doing that, then improve on something else. You're going to make so much more progress if you actually focus on something rather than trying to spread yourself super thin and become a jack of all trades because we all know how that phrase ends and we don't want to be a master of none. We want to become masterful at something. So pick what that something is. Now, the next thing that you can do to improve your artwork more quickly is to try to see your art like you are an outsider or, you know, just basically not the artist. We are often way too close to our artwork. And I mean this both emotionally and physically. Sometimes we are physically too close to your artwork to really see what you are creating and you actually need to take a physical step back. And yes, that is definitely something, but more often than not, we are way too close emotionally to our artwork to really see what we're doing. And I especially tend to notice this in myself when I have a bit of a longer painting session where I'm staring at a piece quite closely for many hours at a time, I kind of lose perspective on what I'm even creating. And that really makes it difficult for me to see what I'm doing and ultimately see where I need to improve. So try to see your artwork like an outsider to see where you need to improve. A practice of this could be even like drawing parallels to how you would see somebody else's artwork and be able to actually identify areas, you know, where you can improve, areas where you like, basically taking a little bit more of an analytical eye to things and removing that emotional aspect. That can be really, really helpful. It's definitely a mindset shift that you need to kind of learn how to do, but it can be super, super helpful. And sometimes it can actually be really helpful to take a physical step back from your artwork, like I mentioned before, or even see it from a different angle. So one of my favorite little hacks here to be able to kind of see your art like an outsider is to actually put it up in a mirror. 
So I'm lucky enough to have big mirrors in my studio. So whenever I'm getting to that point in a painting where I notice I'm starting to lose sight of things because I've been painting for many hours at a time and I want to kind of get that outsider's perspective, take my painting and I hold it up in the mirror so that I see that reversed image. And you'd be surprised at how effective this is at giving you a different perspective. Usually anatomical errors are going to become glaring at that point and you can see, oh, okay, this area here I really need to work on, different things like that. So a mirror is very, very helpful. But another trick that I do that kind of gives me a different perspective is I grab my smartphone, take a picture of my artwork, and then I put a grayscale filter on it. And what this does is it obviously removes color. So it allows you to focus on the values and the form that you're building into your artwork, which are incredibly important and can make or break a painting. But when we're focusing on color, sometimes we lose sight of that. So I like to use that grayscale filter to get that sort of other perspective. And you could always reverse the image in the app as well. Flip it upside down, you know, rotate it, mirror it, just to be able to give yourself a different perspective. And if all else fails, sometimes you just need to hide your piece for a few days and then get a fresh look. We can become blind to certain things because we are so consumed with it and especially if you become emotionally involved into that particular piece, it can be really tricky to actually see what we are doing. So some of these tips here can be really, really helpful for helping you to see your art like an outsider. And that skill, being able to actually look at it and say, oh, okay, this is where I need to improve. This, I really like the way this looks. Okay, let's do more of that. Or I don't love the way this part looks. So let's not do more of that. These are all really valuable things that are gonna help you to improve your art faster. So that brings us to the end of this video. I really hope that this started to change your perspective a little bit and get you clear on how you can go about improving your art more quickly so that you can get the results that you want. Thank you so much for watching. If you really liked what you see here, I would hugely appreciate you hitting that big, beautiful subscribe button. It does absolute wonders for helping other artists find content like this and yeah, helping other artists where they need it most. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. If you're craving more help with painting a realistic wildlife easily, then you will love the Wildlife Painting Academy. Each month, new masterclasses are added, complete with my voice walking you through every moment, paint mixing recipes, reference photos, and so much more. You can check it out in the link in the description of this video.